welcome to Internet Dragons TV. This is Roger, and tonight we're actually going to be covering a DLC of all things for a game that we really loved, and that was Walking Dead from Telltale Games. So I've got with me Vince tonight because he actually played through it. Vince or Joe did not, so he's not going to be joining us tonight. But you played through it yesterday, correct? Correct. Yeah, I played through it actually a while back when it had come out, and then I kind of went through it again to uh, to mess around. I actually have, and this is where, man, I love Telltale games. They're so freaking awesome. When when the game came out initially, The Walking Dead, they had some problems with uh, the release, if you bought it from them, which I had. I'd actually pre-ordered directly from them, not through Steam. So because of that delay, they gave everyone Steam keys so that you could play on, on Steam immediately while they were fixing their problems. Again, a great move on their part. So I actually played on Steam. So my game save is on Steam. So when this <laughs> came out, I was like, okay, I'll just buy it. And then I get an email from them saying, whoever had bought from us the game originally, here, you can just have it for free. Oh. So I was like, well, goddamn, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> but I can't use my game save. <laughs> <laughs> from the other one. So I'm going to actually have to replay the whole damn thing, including that before season two comes out because of the fact that the choices that you make actually carry all the way through. So I'm going yeah, to want to make sure as I can I tell that. nothing from season one affected this DLC specifically. No, no. But although the two together little... will Im impact season two. Exactly. So I want to make sure that the choices that I made, I mean, hell you invest so much of yourself in the freaking season one of the walking dead that I, I want to make sure that follows through into season two. Now, 400 days is a unique experience in terms of being a DLC. I mean, we've played a lot of different DLC for various games and whatnot, and they vary from a freaking gun or glasses, Mass Effect goggle things, to actual story campaigns and whatnot. This is, again, that bridge tie-in between season one and the hopefully soon season two of The Walking Dead, but it's with new characters. There's little hints at, and some people that were in season one, although very, you know, they, they're not that important characters, to be honest, but it is bridging that gap into season two with these new characters now that you're going to really care about. And knowing how much we cared about the characters in season one, this meant a lot to me because I know these characters are going to be well fleshed out, really interesting people that will then be seen go through hell in season two. So I was really kind of psyched up to see what we'd get. Now, again, the thing with this DLC, well, first of all, it's five freaking bucks. Okay. Which is a phenomenal price for what you're getting. That said, you're not getting hours and hours of gameplay here. You, it's again, it's a five dollar DLC, and it's a little different in terms of the gameplay. And we'll get to that as we're talking about it. So, what this is is you're actually following through five people, and it is at various points within the first four hundred days of the apocalypse. So it varies in times. So you get to see, you know, that that fear of those initial first few days to the complacency that is later on. So before we even get into the individual stories and whatnot, I'm, I'm curious what you thought going into this in terms of, again, how, how much you had invested in season one, like we, we all did. I mean, we talked about it on a podcast episode, vidcast episode. So I'd encourage folks to go and check that out and whatnot. Like I, again, I'm just curious if people were as psyched about this as I was and like really could not wait to dive back into that world. Well, obviously I didn't immediately dive back into the world, but it's just because I was occupied with other stuff at the time and I knew it would be there. And I was kind of personally like 
saving it a bit to kind of bridge, you know, make the make the wait right. until season two a little less. <laughs> well, see, with us, too, because of the Comic Book Informed podcast that we do, we talk periodically about the comic book and our distaste of what has become of the comic book of what was once a phenomenal comic book and now is just normal fare. And then the TV show as well, which neither one of us has much use for. But that doesn't take away from the IP. The IP is a strong one, and you can do amazing things with it, as we saw with season one of the Telltale game. Mm -hmm. So let's dive into the individual stories here, and uh, we'll start off with your namesake one. There's Vince's story. (laughs) So I'll let you tackle this one. I know what you're going to say, but it's for completely unrelated reasons. This was probably my favorite episode. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, just because, you know, you had that, you know, it was that it was sort of that like that one room drama feel to it. And, you know, it's in this confined space. Obviously, you know, there's various emotions running high. And like, it just had that feel of something like uh, like the bar scene in Inglorious Bastards, where it was just so tense from beginning to end. And, you know, at any point, all hell could break loose. And of course, once it finally does, it really didn't disappoint because you start off, you have Vince who is on his way, uh, I guess, being transferred between prisons. And we see at the beginning, uh, he actually shot and presumably killed someone. And as he says later, he did it to help out his brother. We don't really get much backstory to that effect because, honestly, what happened there doesn't really matter. (laughs) Where did you ditch the gun? In the garbage can. Ah, I threw it on the roof. Did they find it? The roofer was there the next day and found it. Oh, see, a stupid. <laughs> They're like, oh, Vince, you have the worst luck on the world. <laughs> Apparently he does because the dog knocks over the garbage can and somebody <laughs> finds it anyway. But he's in there with these two other uh, prisoners. God, I forget their names at the moment. Basically, one is a thief who. <laughs> a white collar thief. Yeah, he, he calls himself a white collar thief. And there's a lot of uh, political sort of stuff there, you know, with the, you know, he didn't really do anything worse than what Wall Street does and this and that. Well, it was a and the other, scheme. the other guy who basically it's he's I don't want to say a pedophile, but he made some yeah. moves with a girl who was probably a little too young. Like he didn't seem like he was messing around with like eight year olds or anything. Well, that one was it was hard to get a beat on that one because, well, quite obviously, they're going to be lying. About what they yeah. did. Although the white collar criminal, eh, not so much with the lies. He was proud of what he'd done to a certain degree. Uh, but the other one, yeah, again, he, he didn't plead guilty. And he was saying that, no, he didn't do anything and whatnot. And it's like part of you, like, you want to believe him. You want to <laughs> believe that there's not people like this kind of thing. And it's like I kind of wanted to believe that he wasn't a pedophile. and uh, But, of course, you find out later he... You know, kind of it was. So it was like, yeah, I don't know about you, but I made the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> so in this bus, you know, they're stuck in traffic in an unair conditioned bus in Atlanta. And I've been in that situation. Yeah. It's not fun. Yeah, you know, tempers are running high. Two other prisoners actually get into an altercation. <laughs> One of them starts choking the other dude out with his handcuffs. And, they, you know, they send the, the rookie guard back there to break it up. Oh, he and broke it up. I, I, I'm assuming it was the same on your playthrough. He ended up, like, blowing the guy's head off. Yeah, yeah. And I, I guess the other guy didn't quite make it and is uh, shortly resuscitated as a zombie <laughs> and takes out the guard. Yeah, same with mine. So you're stuck now in this bus with a zombie who luckily is chained up at least temporarily because, as I say, it's only a matter of time before he breaks his own ankle yeah. off. And you, you're still chained up yourself. And the other guard just books. He's out. And you end up in a situation where, okay, you've got the guard's shotgun. You still have to find a way to get out. Shooting the chain itself isn't really an option. You know, shooting the bracket. Basically, it comes down to the only way you can get yourselves free is to shoot the shackle on your ankle. And Vince is there in the situation having to decide, you know, which ankle he's going to shoot at. Now, for me, I wasn't expecting him to just straight up shoot the guy's leg off. I figured he would at least attempt to not do that. I, I'm i really curious if a freaking shotgun shell would actually break the chain. 
because I'm sorry, I still would have been trying the chain if it was. <laughs> well, I actually did try the chain a couple times and didn't do anything. Yeah, so it was like no. Uh, but yeah, I was surprised that it was like a saw moment of taking the freaking foot off. So I, I chose the pedophile guy just because it was his idea. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, I chose the other guy because he was starting to get on my nerves a little bit. But yeah, I found it later. I said I, I wasn't Wrong expecting voice. to blow off his leg and leave him behind. Yeah, it was a little, little harsh. As harsh as chopping the other guy's leg off in season one. True. Yeah, that's true, actually. Although still, didn't make it in one, one blow. <laughs> yeah, took a couple of shots. <laughs> so, yeah, that one there pretty much ends at that point. You yeah. run off and that's but Just that. because it was so tense beginning to end, oh, yeah. it, it, it was probably my favorite of the bunch. It was, it was well done. And again, because it is um, right at the beginning, you have that shock that they all go through when they're seeing the zombies on the side of the road attacking a family. And it's that moment of, did you just see what I saw kind of thing? So it was a fun one. It still wasn't my personal favorite, but it was, it it really got me going for the rest of them at that point. And I'm assuming that police car they saw driving by was Lee. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. It would make sense. Okay, next one up at 41 days was Wyatt's story. Now, this one here is basically a couple of guys who are driving a beat up piece of crap car and they are trying to escape a, um, one would assume, freaking hillbilly in a pickup truck who was cutting them down. (laughs) You know that something happened. Someone got shot as well, and they are booking it out of there. When he was just in the woods taking a crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, 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 they're getting the hell out of Dodge, but someone's in hot pursuit. And uh, so you are Wyatt, who is the passenger on the side, and I uh, can't remember his buddy's name now. But anyways, Eddie, I think. Yeah. Or was, or was Eddie the, the guy in Russell's story? I think that's in Russell's story. Yeah. I'm not positive. Well, but I anyways. Got, I got the list right you're, here. Uh, a second. So yeah, you're Wyatt. You're the passenger. They're, they're talking about what happened. You get no, to decide. It is Eddie. It is Eddie. Okay. You get to decide just how much support you're going to show Eddie based on what he did kind of thing or whether, whether you're just going to shut him out. I actually kind of for the most part middle road but kind of in a joking manner was still siding with him kind of thing i didn't explicitly say i can't believe you did that so i don't know what you chose kind of thing i'm sorry i was looking at something (laughs) screw you buddy Uh, (laughs) anyways you're driving along pickup truck is gaining on you so he hands you the gun and then you got to be shooting through the back window at this truck. And again, I don't know if it's the same for everyone, but for mine, you hit him enough time and then he veers off the road. So then you're driving along and he keeps asking you like, did you take him out or are we going to have to keep worrying? He's going to come back and all this. He pulls into a little dirt road and he's kind of doubling back. I don't, quite get why he was doubling back but anyways he does and he's driving though without lights clearly clearly these two aren't the smartest (laughs) yeah there is that um so then you're going through and he turns the lights off just in case that truck is coming towards them and in so doing he runs someone over because he's going fast enough he's not paying attention they're they're kind of talking slash arguing and he runs someone over but then he can't tell whether or not the person was alive initially. And then eventually he's saying, yeah, he was alive. I'm sure of it. We got to go and check on him because I'm not leaving if this person was alive and they're dying there. So then it's a rock, paper, scissors game of who's going to go out there. And you have the option of saying, I'm not doing this. At which point, I don't know if it's just that Eddie goes out or what happens. I actually lost. So I wound up going out there. Yeah, I you? lost two, but okay. apparently it is possible to win, and I'd be curious to know what happens. Yeah, okay. Yeah, likewise. And this was like the worst game of rock, paper, scissors ever, because out of the three turns, like, I think I had nine ties. 
We just kept picking really? the same thing over and over and over. We only tied. And we're all stupid Eddie's like, oh, what are the odds of that happening? <laughs> oh, that's never happened before. I'm like, well, shut up, Eddie. Rock, paper, scissors. Or, it like, happens. The one, like, I only threw rock once the entire time, and it was like the third round, and I lost. He's like, oh, see, you always stick into rock. And I'm like, no. I wasn't sticking to rock. <laughs> it was the first time I used it, you idiot. Are you high again? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so you wind up going out. Again, very atmospheric. You've got a ton of fog kind of thing. You can hear the walkers around you. And then you're making your way towards the body. There's various clues along the way that you look at, including the guy's backpack. And then you find the blood trail and then you find the guy dragging himself on the ground, flip him over, realize that a, he was alive and B badly hurt and C he was a friggin' cop. So then you have the choice because old friggin' Eddie's in the car panicking and it's like, get back, get back. You have the choice of, do you leave him and go back to the car or do you drag him back? I chose to drag him back. What about you? Oh, I left him. Oh, did you? Why and then, am I not now surprised? that I'm looking at the character listing, that's the same guard from uh, Vince's bus. No, that is yes. awesome. And he also shows up later, which we'll come back to. Okay, cool. So I actually chose to drag him, which... I was like, nah, he's not happening. I, again, I was... My plan was to get back to the car and tell him, nah, it was a zombie, dude. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> Man, you're going to survive the zombie apocalypse just because you're an asshole. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was I was playing on the Mac, which is what I installed this on, versus my, my PC. Um, and I say that just because my, my uh, joystick is hooked up to the PC, not to the Mac. So it was, I already knew that playing with keyboard and mouse, this game sucks to high hell. It's terrible. I remember the street scene. Oh man. From was, episode five. Yeah, it's terrible. So that's why I have the freaking joystick so that I could, I could play it. But then I didn't feel like switching it over, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, ah, screw it. I'm just going to use keyboard and mouse. I'll be fine. So keyboard and mouse dragon cop. Yeah, that ain't fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is not cool. And then you got to keep dropping them. So that you can drop the walkers that are coming towards you. It says so it's like shuffle, drag, shuffle, drag, shuffle, drag, pa pa pa, shuffle, drag, shuffle, and it's like, oh my god! I've, there were points where it's like, you know what? I've had it. Screw you! I was ready to leave him, but it was like, no, I have to get him to the end so I can see what the point of the story is if you bring him back. So in this case here, before you get back to the car, sure enough, hillbilly in a pickup truck shows up. But you're far enough back that you can't really see everything that's going on. Now, I don't know if you're better better at the shuffle drag. If you got closer, I did not. And so from where I was, there's big commotion. And freaking Eddie bolts. He takes off (laughs) without you. So you're stuck there with the freaking cop who, who at that point, it's like, you're on your own, buddy. Because the walkers are coming out of the woodwork. So it's like, screw this. You're on your own. And you just basically take off running. You see, what was interesting about that is because of the fog and your slow buildup, you can hear Eddie being attacked before yeah. you can see him. Yeah. So I'm assuming, oh, my God, this dude's got walkers on him. And then as you get close, you can finally see the lights from the truck. Yeah. That was very well executed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, overall, though, I didn't really like this episode. I just wanted them both to die. Yeah. Actually, Eddie was an interesting character. I would have liked to have seen more of Eddie unless of Wyatt. But, I mean, they, they were fine. It's just it, they weren't as engaging of character why it's more just plain he's not that exciting he reminds me of uh, the dude from the first one that you let die immediately oh dan, dan it was a dan i can't remember his name now it's, it's, i need to play dan again. sounds like a pretty boring name yeah so, so i <laughs> sorry proctor <laughs> 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 if you're listening um but uh but anyways yeah he reminded me very much of that whereas eddie was interesting he was cool it was interesting so moving on from there, we are at day 184. Oh, and before I say anything else too, the, the thing that's important here is like we're, we're taking them in the days that they are in terms of the order. But the thing that was cool about this is you could basically play whichever one you wanted in whichever order. So yeah, it was kind I, of I cool. I did not play them in chronological order. I didn't either, thing. actually. I didn't either. I just kind of, oh, this looks like fun. And I kind of picked and, and, and chose from, from the various ones. So we're going to jump to Russell's story. And this is at day 184. I'll let you take this one. 
All right. So we have Russell, this young kid who's just walking down the street. Yeah, yeah. Smart <laughs> like, kid. <laughs> he's a college kid. He knows what he's done. Yeah, he looked more high school to yeah. me. Yeah. So he's on his way down the street and you know, he's just kind of <laughs> being an idiot walking. And before long, there's a truck coming. A very familiar looking truck because it's yeah. the same truck. From- is, it, is, is it definitely the same one? I wasn't sure. Like I, I figured it was the same truck, but having occurred so far later, maybe it was a different driver. But now that I'm looking at the voice actor listing, it's the same voice actor for okay. all the episodes. Well, so it makes I'm sense, too, because he's, he's a little crazy, so it makes sense. He's a lot crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I chose to dive down to the side of the road and hide. Oh, did you? Yes. I stood my ground. All right. Well, uh, Nate's not that dumb. <laughs> he just stops the truck, and he's like, what are you doing down there? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't want any trouble. He's like, listen, I really don't care what you're doing with the corpse. Down there. I'm like, oh, yeah, this guy is this guy is a, a nut job. Yeah. And eventually uh, he ends up talking Russell into taking a ride. You jump on the cab with him. And Nate really only seems to care about one thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's asking Russell, you know, where he's been, if you know, if there's any good looking girls where he came from, even to the point where God, I, he stops, pulls over, lets a walker come up to the truck and asks Russell, you know, how hot do you think she is? <laughs> Rolls down the window because at least for me, like I was like, you know, whatever, you're an idiot. Let's move on. So Nate rolls down the window and the walker starts attacking Walt and like, I'm screaming, like, not me, but like, I'm like, whatever, she's a 10, let's get out of here. Nate pulls out the gun to go shoot the walker, there's no freaking ammo in the gun. That's exactly it. I, the only difference is, is that, again, because I was using the keyboard and mouse, I didn't have the time to make a choice in that scene. Oh. It's the same as season one where you don't have... Yeah, that was a quick Some one. are faster. Yeah, so it was like, because I, well, I knew what I wanted to say to him. Because <laughs> I saw it. It was like something along the lines of, I'm going to kill you. It was like that one, but I wasn't fast enough to choose it. But in the end, it's the same thing. Tries to shoot, it doesn't work, and so he just takes off. Mm-hmm. So you guys are heading down the road, and you come across a truck stop, which for me, I had seen previously. But uh, timeline-wise, this is the first time we're seeing the truck stop. I had I seen it why. before too because I did Shell's story before this one. So, mm-hmm. and I'm glad I did actually. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So they stopped to check. I think they were checking it out for supplies, is what yeah. it was. Yeah. And they start getting shot at. So, <laughs> this is another hilarious point. You know, Russell runs in completely the wrong direction, gets separated from Nate. Nate's like, come on, make a run for it. I'll cover you. <laughs> so you're running. Nate doesn't fire a freaking yeah. shot. <laughs> Russell gets back to the truck. He's like, what happened? I'll cover you. He's like, hey, you did a good job. <laughs> I actually really liked Nate. <laughs> really? I was ready to. P- he was I, oh such a jerk. It was hilarious. Yeah. I, yeah. There was actually, there was one scene, you're going to get to it, where I made the wrong choice. And when I play it again, I will make the right choice. But this was just because I wanted to. I wanted to survive. <laughs> I know what I'm doing next time. So, so now we're stuck behind the truck, you know, trying to get to the next bit of cover. And Nate's like, "Okay, go ahead, I'll cover you." <laughs> and my Russell's like, "Nah." <laughs> He's like, "You go first, I'll cover you." <laughs> so I let Nate run first. I'm shooting, and he's like, "Okay, now throw me the gun, and I'll cover you." And I'm like, "I just screwed up. I was convinced I was going to throw Nate the gun, and he was just going to run off." <laughs> Luckily, he didn't. He didn't exactly provide good cover, but, you know, we both made it, make it around the side of the building and end up in this diner. Now, prior to this, Russell was talking about, you know, the the community he was living in before and how this guy Steve was in charge. And Steve was just, you know, the quintessential survive, zombie survivor of any time they found another group of survivors, his entire uh, outlook was let's kill them all and take their stuff. So you come across this uh, this truck stop now, and you get inside, and you find this old dude with a rifle and this o- old lady who's you know shot, stabbed, whatever, bleeding out. And apparently the old guy, Walt, recognizes the truck as one that had attacked them previously. And I don't know if he's rightfully assuming or not that, you know, Nate was one that already came, you know, robbed them, shot his friend, and, you know, taken off. 
So that's why he was firing in the first place. So Nate leaves the choice up to Russell of, you know, what should we do? Should we leave them alone or should we take them and or should we kill them and take all their stuff? So for me, I basically told Nate to go screw himself and then just walked off. Yeah, I actually did the same thing, too, which I'm curious if you can prevent what happens. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, after that, you walk away and Nate shoots them. Exactly. So I don't know if you, because there's, there's different options. There's the option where you, you call, call them crazy, essentially, or something like that, and leave. There's one where, I believe there's one that says leave, no, and the other one that says yes. So I, I wonder if there's a way to actually stop him from killing them. So, but, which isn't the one yeah, that I'm, I was... I'm reading, I'm reading right now. No matter which decision is picked, Nate will shoot the couple. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. See, the one for me, well, see, the... When you are at the car or the truck, I should say, after you've come back and he didn't do anything to help you, and then you are planning the get to the other car, and then it's the old you can I can cover you first or you cover me kind of thing. The um, he gives if you say no, I'll cover you. He gives you the gun. One of the options is to shoot him or to aim at hmm. him. I'm not sure. I, I would presume you don't pull the trigger because. That would completely change the whole rest of the episode. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that they do something like this where it's completely different. So, but, but next but I, time I, think I no play, what you do it, it would lead you to that confrontation with Walt, just because that's such an important yeah, story I don't point. Know. I want to kill him. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I want to do. And tell me when you were when he gets to the other side and he's like, "Throw me the the, the gun." Was there anywhere in your brain where you're thinking, "Throw me the idol, I'll throw you the whip." <laughs> Because that's what no, I was like, the only thing I was thinking of is this guy's going to screw me. Yeah, that's well, the exactly. only thing that was on my mind. Yeah. So yeah, no, I did the same kind of thing. I went in and then I, uh, I basically was siding with the old people and uh, and because uh, they're my peeps. <laughs> 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 and uh, and yeah, calling them crazy. Okay. Well, it's good to know that you uh, one way. Or, well, not good, but one way or another, he's going to go psychotic on them. Mm -hmm. So I, I again, I like this one. Not my favorite. But I like this one as well because as much as I hated Nate, holy crap, what a, a, an interesting character. And the voice acting was phenomenal in it too. I actually had to check the voice actor list because between the voice acting and the, even the character model, the entire time in my mind, Nate was played by Thomas Jane. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who did the voice acting for it. It wasn't Thomas Jane. I mean, yeah. Anyways. Cool little clip. It was interesting. And uh, one of those two where, I mean, again, re us being readers of the, the, the comic book, it's a character that you can relate to that we've seen quite a few times in these kind of post-apocalyptic scenarios. So it's something you can expect would be out there. And while I'm looking at this, uh, again, the, the, the character listing, uh, Danny and Justin were the other two prisoners. Whichever one you decided to shoot showed up as a zombie in Russell's story. Oh, dude. When? Uh, he said crawling out of the woods. So. Okay, I think I know which one that is then. Yeah. That's, very, that's right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Man, I got to play this again, like I said. So I'll be picking it up for Steam just so that I could play it again before season two comes out. Or maybe play it on the Vita. Because <laughs> The Walking Dead is coming to the Vita. <laughs> I love my Vita. Okay, moving on. Uh, Bonnie's story. This is at day 220. Basically, Bonnie's a drug addict. And she is was found and helped by a couple. And uh, Leland and... D. D. And so basically the, you start off with uh, Bonnie and Leland and it's quite obvious from the flirting and the face touching and everything that Leland wants to be with her. And so she's clean now and they're talking about all kinds of other things. There's a lot of very coy kind of flirtations that you can choose as well and things like that. And then along comes Leland's significant other. And then that's when you find out he's a sleaze. And uh, D has got a backpack. She doesn't explain 
where she got it. She doesn't explain what's in it. Just she's going to show them when they get to a safe spot. So they basically start taking off together. And as you're walking along, again, I don't know if it's the same for all playthroughs, but there's a lot of tension. D is basically calling Bonnie out on being a tramp and going after her man and him being a sleaze and this and that. And, you know, you guys can do whatever you want together. And she, at the point, sounds like she's given up. But she's still not telling them where she got the bag. So you keep pushing, and then it turns into this huge, loud fight to the point where Bonnie's like, listen, the op- one of the options is I'm just going because they, they aren't listening at anything to anything that you're saying. So it's like, that's it. I'm out of here. You're going to be drawing people here. Sure enough, you start hearing people coming along and screaming and they've got flashlights and it's like that's when you realize she stole something obviously that she should not have so these yahoos are freaking shooting from the hill and then you got this little running scene where you gotta make your way the hell away from them meanwhile lee and d are just or leland taking off they are not waiting to help you at all, even when you get shot. I don't I know. Don't, about it, you. It, in mine, it looked like Leland was trying to come back after I got shot, and Dee pulled him away. Oh, not in mine. They were just running, and uh, and so yeah. So you get shot, and then you gotta stagger a little. Basically, you get separated, and then you wind up in a cornfield. So at that point. The guys with the flashlights are all talking to each other, trying to see where they went. They're trying to find them. And you're doing this little hide-and-seek thing between the rows. I It was very suspenseful in terms of, like, sometimes they're damn close. <laughs> like, they're walking around with their flashlights, and it's like, boom, right in front of you. And it's like, don't turn around, okay? <laughs> I, 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 I think there was a point where I even glitched it out because, like, there was somebody standing right in front of me and walked through me. <laughs> So, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody did that. For me, it, 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 the, the whole sequence is a little awkward for me. I could have done without it. I found it awkward in terms of the moving between the rows. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the when somebody just suddenly appears and boom, they're there. That worked for me because it was like, again, playing in the dark and you're like allowing yourself to get sucked into the 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 suspense and then you're kind of like crouching and trying to get through and you've been shot and then all of a sudden boom they're there i was like whoa whoa <laughs> um but the actually shif- shuffling between rows i will agree that was poorly executed but we'll get more into gameplay later because i definitely do want to talk about general gameplay uh but anyway so you you make it through to an old tractor that's just stuck there in the in, in the ground and you are, there's like guys all around. The flashlights are everywhere. Leland and D nowhere to be found. You pick up a, uh, an iron rod that's stuck in the ground. And basically you got to thwack the person that's coming around the, the machine looking for you. And if you don't, you're dead. Uh, Cause I failed the first time and <laughs> there was no who it is that's killing you. It's just boom, you're dead. When you thwack the person you're supposed to, you find out that it's D. So she's laying on the ground, <laughs> face all fucked up with the eye sticking out kind of thing. It was really gross. And, uh, but I mean, she took an iron to the face. So what do you expect? And, um, and so then you have this conversation with her where she's obviously out of it, but is still blaming her and you did this on purpose because you want to steal Leland and everything. This whole scene was gruesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with, she, the, with the one eye not working and oh man. Yeah. And then of course well the, executed. Yeah. The emotional turmoil too because she's like, yeah. no, I didn't know you. Now I would have preferred um I would have preferred having gone through that scene without failing the first time. So that it was like crap what would have been the choice if I wouldn't have? That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, time. but it, it ruins it because if you don't, you get killed. So theoretically, that means Bonnie's, or not Bonnie, D's coming around to kill you, you know, which is possible. It's entirely possible. It's possible because she's holding her accountable for the problems with their marriage. So it is quite possible that that's, that's what's happening. But it's like in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, no, it felt like it was one of these flashlight-wielding 
Yahoo's coming to kill us and not her. But again, eh, who knows? So, so you have this whole conversation with her and it's like, I didn't mean, I didn't know it was you and blah, blah, blah. She dies. Leland shows up. And then you have the choice at that point to admit to what you did and say that it was an accident. Say that, just basically say lie and say, no, she was like that when I got here or (laughs) be completely, you know, ambivalent about it and say, what's done is done. Let's just get out of here. I, I chose that route because I I fessed up. You did. What happened when you did? I, he was distraught, but you know, eventually I talked him into let's go. Oh, and he did go with you. Mm -hmm. Not with me. So obviously the what's done is done isn't good enough, which he tells you that point blank. And I tried and tried to get him to come with me and he wouldn't. So, and then you hear the gunshot as you're making your way through the field away from them, you hear them shoot him. So interesting. See, this episode was cool because there was so much backstory behind yeah. these three characters yeah. that we never saw, but immediately we knew the situation. Yep. Yeah. And another cool thing, the people chasing you in the woods. Oh God, who are they now? That's Shell and her crew. Okay. D is the one they talked about who managed to break in and steal a bunch of medicine. <laughs> I still got to play this again. <laughs> and like, even when you're playing with Shell, which we'll come to in a, in a minute, yeah. and you're checking the supplies, she even asks if anybody ever found that one missing flashlight. Right. Yes. Yes, that's right. All right. Yes. So, yeah, in terms of characterizations, each of them has a very strong very well acted personality it was it was very good leland was yeah he was sleazy and all that but he was still an interesting character phenomenal voice acting and then bonnie i'm hoping that she won't become a cliche of the you know reformed drug addict that she'll have more of a story because she kind of was a little meek especially towards the end as well Mm -hmm. but it'll be interesting where to see where they go with that so you mentioned Shell's story. Let's go to that one next. And that is, um, they split it up days 236 and 259. And they split it up for very important reasons. So go ahead. Mm-hmm. So we start off, uh, Shell is at the truck stop, which storyline-wise was first seen in Russell's episode. And we see the, well, not the entire truck stop uh, community, but you know, everybody who's there at this point, including... Uh, did I say his name was Walt? I don't think it was actually Walt. I have the listing here, but whatever. It the, yeah, it is Walt. Okay, the old guy. And uh, Shell's there with her younger sister. That's Shell's whole point for being here. So instantly we kind of have that Lee Clementine scenario. Yeah. And I, it was funny because making the decisions here, my mindset was in the how would Lee act around oh, Clementine. Really? And not realizing that uh, Shell's sister, God, what's her Becca. name? Becca. Becca. Is not Clementine. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Not at all. <laughs> Definitely has more of an edge to her. But what was cool here is we find out that the people, well, not all of the people, but uh, several of the people here are the ones who were with Vernon in season one and escaped on the boat that he stole from Lee. I thought that was freaking awesome. Oh. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Because I had been looking for, because they had said there'd be little things from the first season in there, but they didn't specify what or who kind of thing. So I was kind of looking for it. So when I saw that, I was like, ha ha, awesome. <laughs> yes. So we're starting off and it's, you know, just daily life and routines, you know, supply checks. Uh, the leader, Roman, uh, asks Shell to come out back to help him out with some stuff back there. And hey, you get back dogs. there. <laughs> If I don't, they got zombies chained up as guard dogs. Well, it made me think very much of, uh, of, of what's her face? Um, damn it, Michonne. Michonne, yeah. So Although these weren't, um, they weren't pacified. No, no, but still, it was the same kind of principle. Use them to protect yourself, too. And here's where things get interesting that I just found out the zombie right there at the door. That was, again, the guard from Vince's episode and the one that got run over by Eddie. Well, hold on a second here. Eddie ran over him way earlier. How, yeah. Uh, yeah, but he's been a zombie the whole time. Yeah, but I mean... After he, he was... got run over by Eddie, he died and eventually got caught by Roland and his crew and used as the guard dog. 
Okay, because he was kind of moving around easy enough. I would, assume, who got, well, I would assume eventually he bled out yeah. or got eaten. Okay, cool. So, yeah, the, he, he showed up again. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And there's a whole thing with a puppy that I really don't want to get into. Oh, the puppy. <laughs> and it just seemed really out of place. Like, Really? The, the whole thing of going behind the truck stop, like, okay, yeah, we have the guard dogs, but... I was just like, okay, go out here, get a scene, and go right back inside. Like, I don't know. It just seemed kind of poorly executed to me. See, I – and see, this was actually my favorite of them. And I really liked this one, but this this one particular scene just kind of didn't work for me. See, I liked it because it it offered more exploration, which is something you didn't Mm -hmm. get a lot of in this at all. Again, we'll get to that when we're talking gameplay later. But – there wasn't a lot. So this felt more, to use a cliche kind of thing, like a telltale game. It was like more let's explore everything. So I explored the diner. I looked at everything. That's when I yeah. saw the blood stain, which relates to Russell's story. I was looking at the uh, the wall where the paintings were. And then in the back rooms and then in the back, so in the backyard. So that exploration and seeing what their world is for them. And the confines of that, I, I kind of liked that. And it, it, I liked it and I felt that it worked because then that RV, which is used to confine them, then becomes – has a potential to become something else. So I really I, – I felt it actually worked very well. Mm-hmm. So it, like I said, it was just that one particular scene behind the truck stop that didn't work for me. Everything else was great. Right. Okay. So uh, as you come back from uh, behind the truck stop, suddenly you find out that they have captured an intruder. Some, some guy, he doesn't, even, he doesn't even get a name, yeah. <laughs> who they caught trying to sneak off with some supplies. And basically it comes to a vote of, you know, what do we do with this guy? Obviously, you know, we can't just let him run off. We, we can't keep him here because, as they said, last time we did that, it ended badly. Which, of course, you know, more backstory that we don't see, but it still works. It's, yeah. And so the options are basically let him go and run the risk of him coming back with friends or, you know, shooting him dead on the spot. Now, this is where for me, I was like, oh, well, the guy's got to die. But then they did the whole camera thing like they did in season one of panning over to the little girl, yeah. that little girl. <laughs> yeah, Becca. She's Becca's like, you know, a teenager. And I was like, and, and I instantly had that Lee Clementine response of no, have to be nice around the little girl. So I voted to let him go. So did I actually. Oh, I would not have expected that from you. Why, why do you say that? I, I'm not I the cold-hearted you, bastard you are. Yeah, but in situations, I don't know. It, I just assumed you would have killed him. You know what's funny is that when I was playing this, it was way different than season one. Because season one, you always maintain the same mentality playing as Lee. And it's always about protecting Clementine and it's always about being a good role model for her and things like that kind of thing. So I played the entirety of that game in that mindset. With this, I went into it specifically, taking the time to to think about it, specifically wanting to play different mindsets for each of the characters. So that's why my Vince was was more tough and he was not putting up with crap you know my Wyatt was more kind of easygoing to a certain degree kind of wishy-washy so each I, I wanted to play them differently so for 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 um Shell I wanted her to be that caring older sister that wanted to care for for her sister so I I chose to let him go and then I that for the rest of the story as well it influences the decisions that I made mm-hmm so for both of us then, what happened is once it fast forwards at this point to day 259, found out that guy actually did come back with his friends. They raided the place and ended up killing one of your uh, – one of the other people there. So I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I made the wrong choice. <laughs> now, of course, whether – you know, if you do kill the guy, you still do the fast forward. Just you know, there was no attack in between. So once we're on day 259 now – uh, Roland has, or Roman, 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 I'm sorry, has captured Stephanie, one of the community members who was trying to basically grab a bunch of supplies and get out of town. Now, 
I don't think it was ever really – no, it was never even explained why she was doing it. You never even get to talk no. to Stephanie. I even tried. I was like, you know, let me talk to her. I, want, I wanted to know why she was running off, but the game never gave me that opportunity. Well, it would depend on what you chose at the end as well. I don't know whether or not you get to talk to her at the end depending on what you do. Mm -hmm. So Roman brings in Shell basically saying that since I was the, one of the ones who didn't want to kill the guy the first time, that I needed to prove myself and that – not I, but Shell needed to prove herself <laughs> – and Roman wanted Shell to be the one to execute Stephanie. Because at this point, there is no other option. You know, we, we've seen what happens if you let the person go. So it's you, really the only option for Stephanie is that she's got to die. So you end up going back to the trailer and telling Becca what's going on. And Becca's got a hard edge yeah, to her yeah. at this point. <laughs> Becca's like, you know, if you're not going to do it, I'll shoot her myself. I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> So it comes down to Shell, the the choice between committing to that life and shooting Stephanie or just grabbing the keys and driving off to try and protect Becca. Now, based upon my choice the first time around of, you know, taking the, you know, the, the nice way out, if you will, I figured this time around, I really did have to shoot the person. Really? So I, I killed, I killed, well, I didn't, you know, they didn't show the, the, the episode ends once you make your decision. So, you, you know, you don't actually see shell going and shooting Stephanie, but. So you don't I, get I a did, choice to talk to her then? No, okay. I, I didn't, I did not uh, get the chance to, to see anything beyond that. As soon as I picked the gun, the episode ended. Well, see, I just wrote off. <laughs> Screw that. And actually, it's a very good ending to um, that little vignette because you basically, it's a, a mad dash. And it's like, screw that, grabs the keys, runs to the front of the, the Winnebago, and uh, Becca's screaming like, what are you doing? And she's taken off, tears out of there, and it's like pieces of the wall that were connected to the Winnebago are falling down. Roman's running after her, screaming and everything, and then it just basically is the Winnebago taken off. I thought hmm. it was awesome. It was very, Nifty. very cool. Yeah. So, yeah, that was uh, that was my favorite. And it was a little bit longer, I think, than the other ones. Uh, or maybe it's just because of how it was split up as well. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'd say the actual length was about the same. There was just more to do in between the story bits. Yeah. And, and that made it longer. Yeah, and more, again, more to explore, which you didn't get in a lot of the other ones. So mm -hmm. I really liked that. And it's, I, I like the characters in this one, too, and the, uh, and, and the story as well. So this was a good one. So that's all of them. Once you're done that, then you get to the epilogue. And this is where there is a survivor, Tavia, who is basically part of a community. And her job is to go out scouting for survivors and to bring back whoever she deems would be a good fit for their community. And she's talking to presumably the leader on a walkie talkie and who is saying, like, be careful who you choose. We've got a good system here going so basically don't just bring in murderous screw ups. And so it's, it's her call. And so she drives along and she is, she goes to the, the bulletin board where all of their notes are, which is what you use when you're doing the uh, selecting, which you want to play, takes them all and then basically tracks them, which isn't very hard apparently <laughs> yeah, like around the corner. Yeah. Uh, so she goes and finds them. It's late at night. They're, they got a fire going and then she talks to them the choices that you make here then dictate who is going to go with you to the the camp. And you try to reassure them that everything is going to be all right, that it's a good group of people and things like that. You have a variety of choices, too, when they're asking you because they're saying, like, how can you trust you? And she can either, like, try to convince them or just say, you can't. That's, that was my choice. That's what I said as well. And I think that's and what that was such a cool ending too because that was like the last choice you have and at that point the camera pans out and the screen darkens and you have the last the last thing you hear is you know you can't trust me yeah so and then again that determines who's going to go with you so then once you're done because they, they they kind of all have their their points like uh russell especially does not want to go he feels they have a good thing with just them they should just stay like that and they're fine and whereas um like bonnie really wants to go shell wants to go if becca wants to go kind of thing it's because she wants to 
put her in a safe environment. So you have to try to convince I don't even know if it's possible to convince them all to come with you. I know that with me, it was basically split down the middle. I don't know about you. Yeah, I, I had two come with me. I had uh, Vince and Bonnie come along. Really? See, Vince mm-hmm. did not come with me. So I had uh, I had Shell and Bonnie and... Jeez. Maybe I only had two as well. I thought I had three. Okay, anyways. So, um, so well, yeah. You, so, may, you might be thinking of Shell and Becca, Becca as a package. Yeah, yeah. possibly. So that is basically the end of this, which then will lead us to, I don't know which ones of these characters are going to be in season two, but obviously some of them, I don't know if it's just the ones that you convince or how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. But still, it's, it's so the way this whole thing worked together, because it wasn't, you know, any one decision, just like we saw in, you know, season one, it wasn't, it's not any one decision, but how you played each individual episode combined with the choices you make when you're playing as Tavia are, are the ultimate determining factors. I would assume it's possible to bring all five along, just like it's probably possible to have nobody come along. Yeah. Yeah. No, just I, like we saw in uh, episode five, you could either have like the entire crew behind you or it's just Lee going in solo. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's again, why I want to play it on my save so that it can, follow through because I really it's one of those that I'll be playing several times to see if it's possible to get them all or whatnot because I there's some of these stories I really want to know more about those stories I want to know what happened and things like that so it it will be very interesting so let's actually talk about the gameplay now for this as well because what I found was that this was not (sighs) Not like The Walking Dead and much more about just making a few selections here and there, but it was very, very scripted. There were very few options to move around, Mm -hmm. to do different things. The, uh, it, it had the typical choice system and, uh, and a lot of them, but I mean, you could spend most of the time just kind of pressing just the select which option you want to say very little movement very little actual gameplay yeah and you know i didn't really mind that like given that it was so short it really spent a lot of time just focusing on the characters themselves than than the overall game but you could have done that which they obviously proved you could have done that and had more gameplay like Mm -hmm. they did in season one so it's my expectations were higher for this. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm going to be playing it again and I encourage people to get it without a doubt. But it I don't know, maybe I got to look at it different because it was just DLC to bridge the two. But I don't know, I was really hoping that it would have a lot more of the same gameplay that we saw in season 1 and it it simply didn't. See, I was just basically judging this on a completely different set of criteria. Like, I wasn't, story. I, I wasn't looking to 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 compare it to what we saw in season one, just because of the, the the way it was set up. Okay, all right. Well, that that is what I thought of it. Again, it is phenomenal, great storytelling, and it is something that you probably will want to play through a couple of times just to see the different options and what can happen. And mm-hmm. again, because it is something that is bridging and that will, the, the choices you make here will actually hold true for season two. It's definitely something you are going to want to pick up and play before season two comes out. And interestingly, as I'm looking through this again, you know, all the little tie-ins and stuff there, there, this actually does draw a couple of small points from your season one save. Stuff like, you know, when they're talking about the boat, you know, various yeah. choices you made that led up to that, they'll, they'll mention it. But also, back when you're talking about episode one, who you decided to save, it was Doug, sorry, Dan, no, right. <laughs> or Carly. Whoever you didn't save is the zombie full of maggots that Russell dives down next to uh, on the side of the road in his ah. episode. <laughs> because I, I, when they showed, like, they did a specific zoom in on the face, and I'm like, that, that's probably somebody I should recognize. Right. And, and come to find out, it's actually, I'm sorry, it's the one that you do save and later on ends up dying. Okay. Okay, so that means it'll be Doug for me. I'll definitely recognize him. Because mm-hmm. I, I guess that's where they pulled over and uh, what's her name? The crazy lady shot him. Right? 
Yes, yes, that's exactly where that would be. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah, Telltale. Good job, guys. So, yeah. <laughs> These guys. I, clearly, I missed like half the game when I was actually playing it. You know what? It's it's funny because um, I was just reading. I got the press uh, announcement from Telltale in regards to the Walking Dead Vita bundle that's going to be coming out soon. And it was it was talking about the Walking Dead on the Vita as well. And again, I've made no... I don't hide the fact that I love my Vita very, very much. And it was like, I would play the Walking Dead again on the Vita. Just because, again, it'll make me play it again. And I, I know it'll look gorgeous on the Vita. I, I need to play through the whole thing again. It was such a phenomenal game. And with all the different choices that you made and how it impacts, obviously, not just Season 1, but this, you know, DLC bridging between Season 1 and Season 2. So, any pardon thoughts? When Season 2? God. <laughs> cannot come soon enough. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to stop by internetdragons.tv. Subscribe to this channel on YouTube, and you can follow us as well on Twitter at Internet Dragons. And so we'll talk to you guys later.